Nearly two decades in the sports broadcast game and what a ride it's been. Interviews with the 42nd president Bill Clinton to Lakers legends Kobe Bryant and the NBA's all-time leading scorer Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to name a few. I've been blessed to cover and tell some amazing stories but there were so many more I didn't get to tell. How tough is it to kind of keep things going with so much uncertainty, not knowing when you're going to actually get back on the diet? Well, you know, I, I've been asked that question a lot. Like people are asking me what I'm doing and how are you preparing? And kind of the way I, I'm looking is um, looking at it is, you know, whenever I left spring training, I was feeling really good and hitting the ball well, um, driving it, had some real good at bat, stuff like that, catching good and. I kind of look at it now as I'm keeping my sword sharp, you know, for whenever the fight breaks out. So, um, you know, I'm just, that's kind of the way I'm looking at it and uh, feeling good about it. You know, I, I have access to a facility and private where no one messes with you and there's no one else here. It's just me and, you know, one other guy and, you know, we're able to get a uh, guy to throw to us. So it's uh, very fortunate and, you know, not a lot of guys can do this. So I'm very, uh, very blessed for this. You are in Boston Red Sox spring training. You're in camp, like you said. You're feeling good. Everything's going well. And then, bam, you're told that everything is over and go home, basically. And yeah. so what was your reaction? And did you think that that would be the outcome once the pandemic actually started? Um, yeah, I mean, it's obviously something that – I was following it since since it started. The reports came out of it in China. I, I like to watch the news and listen to the news on the radio and stuff in my truck. And, you know, I'm always following up and, and being caught up with current events. And, you know, I was like, ah, no, that is, I don't know if that'll make it here, you know. And I just ne I never really saw this coming. I, ne I never saw it coming. I had heard about it, and I was hoping that it would be caught, got under control. And, um, you know, uh, but I tell you what, when this happened and they sent everybody home, it's just – the weirdest situation. And, um, you know, this is the first time I've had April off since I was probably in middle school. And that's not only me, it's pretty much every other baseball player out there right now. So it's very, it's a very strange time for us in the baseball world, but I also know it's a very strange and difficult time for a lot of people across the world. And, um, it's, a uh, you know, this is a, this is a change for everyone. And like you said, it's not just difficult for players. I mean, you all have families and, and they have occupations. Your brother, Matthew, is an EMT worker down in Florida. Just how has he been able to, you know, um, stay safe and, and make sure that he continues to stay safe? Well, he works at a um, – he's, he, he's an EMT at a nursing care facility down there. And, he, you know, there's a lot of retired people who live in Florida, and he, he works at a retirement community. And, you know, he, he gets calls all the time to go and assist, you know um, – the elderly people that live there, um, he goes and, you know, serves them, deals with them and, uh, you know, uh, treats them and stuff for different things. And, you know, I'm, this is just another, you know, another thing he has to deal with and be and protect himself. I mean, I, I have two nephews. Uh, he has two nephews. He has two sons. And uh, so he's, you know, he's grinding along with everybody else. I mean, the, the healthcare, healthcare workers are, uh, are the ones that I have a, I have my, my sister-in-law is a nurse, you know, my best friend's sister, who's like my sister, she's a, a nurse in San Francisco. And, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of people that I know that I'm connected to that are dealing with this on a one-on-one -on -one basis medically. So it's a, it's a very difficult time for them and not only them, but for, for those, you know, those people across the country that are dealing with it. I know very few people right now, all the experts, everything is just uncertain. There's no answers, but what has Major League Baseball told you uh, and other players in terms of getting ready and, and how much time you will be able to prepare once the baseball season resumes? I was on a call this morning, actually, um, with some of the Red Sox guys. And, you know, they were saying maybe three weeks max that we're going to know before the season starts, Where, wherever that season is going to be, whether it's the Arizona thing or – Arizona, Florida split thing. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know the, I don't know everything about what's going on with their talks, but um, from what it sounds like, we're going to be doing the Arizona thing. Uh, that's probably got the greatest chance of what we're going to do. Um, I don't know for sure. Just what I've heard. And uh, we're only going to get about a three week spring training. So we need to kind of, 
as soon as we arrive back wherever we're going to start the second spring training, um, we need to kind of be ready to hit the ground running. So, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm fortunate. I'm, I'm able to pretty much do as full speed as I can, um, as you can get, um, without seeing playing in a live game and uh, facing a, a pitcher, which actually I might do that here in the next couple of weeks. Service days wise, you're less than a month from having 10 years yeah. of big league service and you've been fortunate and blessed enough to live out a childhood dream to make it to the major league level and have lasted this long. And during this pandemic where we all have time to spend time with our families as well as reflect on our lives and careers. And when you look over your 10 year journey, like what comes to mind or is it still just surreal that, wow, like not only did I make it to the big leagues, like winning the lottery, of course, like you just said, but I've been able to maintain and stay at this level for this long. You got to have a lot of things go your way. That's, that's first. That's the first thing you got, you got to have breaks. I mean, there's no question. I mean, whenever I was called up, I had a, the guy in triple a quit and the guy in the big leagues got ran over in the span of about a month and I was in double a and I got called all the way up from double a in 2010, uh, double a then moved to triple a for like two or three weeks or whatever it was. And I got called up, you know, they, a lot of crazy things have to happen, you know, in order for you to play at this level and play this level a long time. I mean, I know I heard a number, I don't know how accurate this is, but I believe it, you know, that, 1% of all minor league players play in the big leagues. 1% of all minor league players. And out of that 1%, only 5% play longer than five years. You know? And so it's like you're talking about, like, a, such a small number. And here yeah. I am. I got almost 10 years. I got th- I'm 34 days short of 10 years. And I'm going, man, I am so blessed, man. I don't, I don't deserve it. And I'm so thankful for all the – all this uh, all this cool stuff I've, I've got to see and be a part of. And, you know, I've – after I left Milwaukee, I bounced around. I've been on a different team, I felt like, every year. But, you know, I, I look at it like I've got to experience so many different cities, towns, cultures, people. I have so many friends, teammates that I've met, people I've met. And I've got to experience just different ballparks. And it's just – I'm just – I've just been so fortunate. I mean, not everybody can say that. And I can. And I'm, I'm very grateful. That's awesome. So you mentioned it, uh, the bulk of your career, it was in a Milwaukee Brewers uniform and, and you put up some good years in, in that uniform. And what was the funnest and most fondest season that you had in Milwaukee? Uh, team wise, it was probably 2011 when we went to the uh, NLCS against the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. That was probably the best team wise year I've had. Uh, per personal wise, it was probably 2014. When I hit 300 and, and, the, and all those doubles, and uh, that was cool. I mean, it felt like everything I hit was a double. And <laughs> I was hitting flares, man. I remember I was hitting flares that were just dumping down the lines, little, little duck farts, you know, and they were, they were dropping. I get a double, and I'm like, oh, I don't know how I'm doing this, but it, I'm doing it. And uh, it, was so, it, was, it was so cool, man. It, that was a fun year, personally. Yeah, that year you actually set the National League record for 53 doubles, and you yeah. passed – Hall of Famer uh, Yvonne Rodriguez, and and yep. uh, you ended up getting traded to Texas, and you know I'm sure you had a chance to interact with Pudge. As well. I did, and he he congratulated me for doing that, for breaking his record, and you know I, I thought that was the coolest thing. I mean, Pudge is a guy that I watched growing up, and him and for me, him and Johnny Bench are the two best catchers ever, just all around catchers, and uh, Pudge is just I didn't really I didn't get to watch Johnny Bench play. Um, but uh, Pudge, I got to watch play, and he was a guy that, you know, I was always like, man, this guy's a stud all around, just could hit, could throw, could run, just absolute stud behind the plate. and Definitely a guy that uh, I looked up to as a player. Yeah, caught every day in that Texas mm-hmm. heat, which was incredibly, <laughs> I'm yeah, sure, it's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, you mentioned the relationships and the places you've been able to go and, and the things you've been able to do and afforded by baseball. And one of those relationships that you talked about was Bob Euchre. Talk about your time in Milwaukee and the relationship that you have with Mr. Baseball. I mean, one of the funniest human beings I've ever been around. Not only funny, but genuine. You know, he, he, he found out that I like fishing. And a couple of days later, he had a couple, he put a couple of fishing poles in my locker with my name on it, you know, that he had went and gotten for me from, um, 
from a, a St. Croix fishing rods and they're out, they're out of Wisconsin. And wow. he, he got me like, he just does stuff like that. I mean, he, he, if you call my phone and listen to my voicemail, he's my voicemail message. And he's, yeah, I mean, not, not many guys can say that, but I, I got yeah. it done before I left. And uh, he's just, he's just a great, funny, awesome guy to be around. That's somebody that I appreciated so much as a player. And I, I, got, I got, when I came back to Milwaukee last year when we were also Chicago, the first time I'd been, been back since I was traded, you know, he came down and saw me and we talked and he's just, He's just a special man. I mean, he's he's a special guy. And, you know, one one of the biggest things I respect about him is the fact that he doesn't get on players when they're when they're doing bad. You know, uh, you hear a lot of announcers these days, a lot of the media, they'll wear out players that are struggling or they make a big error, they'll wear them out. And Yuke always told me, he goes, I'll never get on a player because I know how hard this game is. I know how hard it is. I played it. He goes, I wasn't very good at it, but I know – and I know how difficult difficult it was. So when a player makes a mistake, I never wear him out. And he was true. I whenever my days off, I, they would have the they would have you calling the game in the clubhouse. And so I'd be in there listening during the game. I go in there during the game sometimes to grab something, and he'd be talking. And I listened to him for a minute or two, and it was never anything negative. If the team was struggling, he'd always start cracking jokes or talking, saying some funny stuff. You know how he does. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, he just started cracking on jokes and it, it just, he's great. And, you know, I think I always respect him so much for that because it's easy to get on players on the field whenever they're struggling or they make a mistake. It really is. This game is so easy to when you watch it on TV, but when you get in the box and it's a hundred or 95 and, you know, it's, it's a heck of a lot harder. It's the hardest thing to do in a sport. <laughs> hardest singular thing to do in a sport is hit a baseball and or field hit a baseball or field of a missile hit right at you at 110 mile an hour. Like it's, he's a special man. And I, I'm very grateful for being, for, for being able to be around him and, and experience um, him. And um, you know, he's, he's just awesome. Yeah. Yuke is a, a one of a kind and he's a treasure in Milwaukee and, and, and amongst the baseball community as well. And, and uh, when you go to the park and you, and you're in Milwaukee, like, was that, like, the best time of your life in, in terms of, like, everything falling into place? You're in the big league. You're in the big leagues, and you're playing on a winning team. You're playing in a city where the fans are crazy over the Brewers, and, and you have relationships with Bob Euchre. Like, when you look back at that, do you think, like, gosh, that was, that was pretty cool? Oh, man, I, I do all the time. I mean, it's, you know, before I left, I, I made some comments, like, I want to be on a winning team. And, you know, honestly, those were stupid comments. I never should have said that. And <laughs> they were, they were stupid. And it was immaturity. And it was, it was comments that, you know, once you leave and, you know, you, you go out and you start bouncing around, it's like, man, you know, oh, I really had a good in Milwaukee. I had a great time there. You know, I, I made some, some of the best friends I've ever had there. Um, you know, the clubhouse guys, the coaches, it's, I, the fan, the fans are unbelievable. I mean, they, they support yeah. you. They love you. It's, it's, a, it's a great baseball town. And I was so fortunate and blessed to be able to play there as a player, start my career there. And uh, I look forward to going back there and as a visiting player and playing. I mean, it's, it's a great place. And I'm very grateful for that experience in my life. My, you know, my daughter was born there. Um, and so she, we, have, we have very fond memories of our experience here for sure. That's awesome, man. I appreciate you joining me, Luke, and I'm going to leave it right there, man. Thanks for your time. Good yeah. luck when the baseball season ever begins, and uh, I know we'll cross paths again, man. I really appreciate it. You got it. it. Thanks for having me, Kelly. Right. I appreciate it. All right, man. It's Jonathan Lucroy on Untold Truths with Telling.